want to share, the more we are reminded, the more we can remember what, what the Lord wants for our life and what the Lord wants for Christianity, what the Lord wants for the church, we're doing A-OK, -okay, amen? So today I want to encourage you, today I want to share with you, today I want to show you in the scriptures of something great. It's pretty sad that the enemy, the devil, the enemy that's out there, the false religions today, have their act together, but Christianity doesn't. It's starting to get a little scary, but can I tell you, praise the Lord, our, our commander-in-chief, the Lord Jesus Christ, has it all together, amen? And I, if we can just, we ourselves as Christians can realize who's the authority of our life, who's in charge, and, and understand what we need to do as, as soldiers in Christ. Now, if you're here on Thursday, we're doing spiritual warfare, amen? And on Thursday, we're trying to show a little bit about the warfare, and we're noticing as we go ahead and read our scriptures, that our biggest enemy is us, amen? It's, it's not Satan, but the Satan manipulates a lot of things, but I want to help you here. Here in the church, it should not be so. Here Paul is teaching his church in Corinth some great truths in the Bible that help us realize how to be a one for the cause of Christ. How to stand up for him and how to proclaim his name. How to march on, amen, and march on to Zion to do what we need to do for him because it is coming close. I don't know about what you Listen, there's some scary things happening in the world today. And I don't know about you, but you're seeing a lot of it on TV Things you scratch your head about, right? Look up here. Things you scratch your head about, but things that have been going on for years that have been hidden and not even noticed. So I want to tell you, but one thing we cannot allow to happen is this. We as Christians cannot allow to be um, drifting off in la-la land, so to speak. You know, we can't fall asleep on the cause. Second thing is, we have to learn to band together for the cause of Christ because it's for the gospel's sake. It's for the glorify God. We need to see more folks get the gospel in their hands to be saved and born again. And then the third thing is, we need to be united together and work together because, listen, many hands make what? Light work. We need to band together. We need to be united. We need to sit there and, sh and, sit there and make Christ, not glorify Him and please Him in everything we do in our life. I don't care if it's in the workplace. I don't care if it's in the home. It needs to be you anywhere. When you wake up in the morning, you breathe. You've got to please God. Amen. So we need to really truly understand what we're here for down here on this earth. And here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, you're going to, don't get mad at me here, but please read along with me here in uh, chapter 12 here in 1 Corinthians. Start, start in verse 1. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you what? Ignorant. So, so Paul is talking to his church this morning, and, and he wants to make sure that the church is not ignorant. You have your totally informed. Look here at verse 2. You know that ye were Gentiles, carried away with dumb idols, even as were you led. Wherefore, I give you to understand. He's, so here Paul is trying to teach you. I want you to understand something. Remember we used to drift away and bow down to idols that didn't speak back to you? Never answered your prayer. You bow down to this idol and Nothing happened. He goes on here uh, that no man, speak, it says, Wherefore I give you, understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God called Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. Now there are diversities of gifts but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations but in the same God which worketh, look, what does it say, all what? All in all. Do you know that this, look at, there are so many different ways. I don't care if we put Brother Mike Dobson in a clown suit, amen? That'd be pretty cool, wouldn't it? Put you in a, put Brother Mike Dobson <laughs> in a clown suit at the corner and put out tracks. What's happening there? If we put Brother Mike in a clown suit, what's happening? What do you think it's going to do out there? It's gonna, people are going to sit there and go, why is that doing the clown suit? But everybody else around there is passing out what? And the gospel's getting into the hands of lost people. Now, I say we don't have to do that, but it would be kind of a point to come across. That is one diverse way to get the gospel. <laughs> I know we might do it. I'll put in the clown suit. I don't care. <laughs> Janice is all for it. Look at it. Let's put Mike Dobson in a clown suit. <laughs> but, but that's pretty funny, right? Look at it. There's all kinds of different ways in administration. Every ministry here should do what? Brother Kenny, when we have the pantry open, what is it open for? 
to pass out the word of God, get that gospel out. So whether we have one bag of food or three bags of food or 20 bags of food, the issue is get the gospel in the hands of the people. Whether it's a Saturday, we get together, we pray, we clean, we do a little bit of work. Then we want to go out there for an hour and administer the gospel to people. Everything we do, we need to take advantage to get the gospel out to people. Invite people to come hear the gospel. Uh, share the gospel. Witness to people. Share your testimony. Amen? So it goes out there further here. It goes on and says, All under the same, the work of all in all. Everything was working together for one. Verse 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit of all. Now, of course, in Galatians, the what's the fruits of the Spirit? Who could tell me what it is? Who said, who said love? Who said love? Very good. Love, joy, peace. What else? Yes. So guess what? It means you've got to put up with me longer. You, I might irritate you a little bit, but you're going to have to put up with me. Somebody here in the church might irritate you. Guess what? That's what long-suffering is. We, I put up with a lot of stuff. I, 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 hey, in the ministry, in the church, you know, sometimes I feel like it's like, like a bunch of kids in a sandbox fighting over the same toy, you know what I mean? I'm ready to take all the toys away, Bill. And they can sit there and wait for a cat to poop in it. And they can sit there, you know what I'm saying? Because we got to work together, amen? we got to work together. Why? All for who? And all the ministry here, look, one ministry is not better than the other ministry. Hello. We're all in it together. We're all doing it for the same Lord. Hey, look at the two, charity mission is not better than soul winning, ministry, soul winning visitation. They're both here to get the gospel out, amen? To do for the glory of God. The, the adult science class is just as important as the children one. Why? Because we're ministering the word of God and getting the gospel out. Don't make a difference. It's all for who? The Lord, amen? Okay, let's go down a bit further here. It goes on in verse 8. For, look at, for to one is given by the spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same spirit, to another faith by the same spirit, to another, the gifts of the healing by the same Spirit. To another, the work of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of the spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. To another, the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh uh, that one and the self-same Spirit. Now, what I want you to notice in verse 11, you see a capital S on there? That's the Holy Spirit. If you look at in verse 10, it talks about discerning of spirits. Small s. Because some things can be dangerous to the body. You got to make sure of it, but the Holy Spirit needs to be the, on top of the world. It needs to be the priority, Amen. Now, at this time, God gave the apostles some some gifts that will sooner or later will be, be gone away because the Bible will have it all sorted out. Back in the day, God gave apostles to lay hands on people to heal them. It was only for a short period of time that, as a sign to the Jews. Well, they only worked so long until the Bible came together. Jesus came and did what He had to do. Everything came together as one. Now we don't have to have the apostles. If that was the case, they could be at Children's Hospital right now, amen? They could be at Roswell right now healing people. If that was the case, we don't, those gifts are done away because now the Bible is there. Now we can pray for people for God to, be, to heal them up, amen? Now I've seen that here in this church. We've prayed for people to get healed up. We've fasted and prayed for people to get healed up. There's people who came to this altar. We laid hands on them, a little bit of oil, and prayed over for God to heal them. And they helped. We didn't slap them in the forehead, okay, like Benny Hinn does. We actually prayed for them, biblical prayer, and prayed for him for God to do the healing. As they go to the doctors, they get the medicines, whatever. We saw God see people recover and healed up. Why? That's how big of a God we have. But we did it biblically. We did it in order. It goes on here a little bit further in verse 11. But all these worketh that one the self-same spirit dividing to every man severally as he's will. So even though people are going out there and things are divided properly, but all underneath Jesus, amen, in the, in the same spirit, the Holy Spirit, doing it unto the Lord, but everybody's doing something different in the church. That's pretty good, right? Okay? Some people here cannot teach adult science class. There's only a slash two. Some people can't do the work of some of you here. You have a uniqueness. Hallelujah. Thank God there's not two of Pastor Pete, right? Say amen. You can say amen on that one. Thank God there's not two of me. My wife can only handle one of me, amen? <clears throat> Some of you here, thank God there's only one of you. There is two of you. We'll be really in trouble, amen? That's why God has made you who you are today and has placed you here at Charity Baptist Church. You know why? Because you bring a little extra spice of flavor to the whole bunch, amen? And we can't have two of you. We can only have one of you. 
Okay? And that's, that's beautiful because now we've got to all blend together with that diversity, the uniqueness to do something great for God. Let's go a little bit further now in verse 12. For as the body is one, and it has many members, and all the members of that body is being many, are one body, so also is Christ. Like I said, for by one spirit we are all baptized into one body, meaning Christ, whether we be Jews or Gentiles, whether we bond or free, and have been all made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member, look at now, for the body is not one member, for the body is not one member, but many. Hallelujah. I'm going to stop right there. It goes on a bit further about how the foot can't do the act of, of, a, of a nose, okay? My foot can't smell good food, okay? My nose can smell good food. Amen? <laughs> oh, I'll, I'll, it was your birthday. I'll let you slide on that one, okay? <laughs> oh, good grief. Comedian everywhere. Isn't that terrible? So t- Today now, today now, on that note, today, <laughs> for today on note, I want to talk about three things that makes God phenomenal, great, awesome that he is, that he is, amen? That he is the Lord of all that could put together in the church a body of Christ that, number one, has a unique diversity, amen? Number two, help us to understand day by day, every time we gather together, every time we assemble together, every time we serve the Lord together as one, we get to understand the body of Christ in all its aspects. Like, who's good at what? Who has a talent and ability that God gave them to be whatever? A willing heart to do something. And they get to get, do it all onto the Lord, amen? And how we can work together greatly. And then the third thing I want to share about how it helps us is how iron sharpeneth iron. Now, you take two things iron together, it, comes a little, it gets heated up, it gets a little friction. How it helps us take off the rough edges of each one of us to work together, amen? Listen, I lost a lot of hair. It made my head more rounder, amen? Because of the ministry. No, it was because of my teenagers. No, it was because of my marriage. No, it was because... <laughs> it was just because life itself has a lot of things that we have to go through, right? But every adversity, every struggle, everything that we have to... The growing pains in the Christian walk, the growing pains of serving God, the growing of... A, a church, a growing team, serving God in the ministry is all good for us, whether it might be negative, it might be a struggle, it might be cankerous, it might rub you the wrong way, but praise the Lord, it's good for us. You know why? Because we learn how to be unified. The third thing we talk about how unity glorifies God. Those are the three things we're going to talk about this morning, okay? So let's pray. We'll get right into it. Father, again, thank you so much. Dear Lord, I help. I pray that we, we can get some help this morning how we can realize that each aspect when it comes to the body of Christ, that we can sit there and grow in grace and to learn how to be in our own life as a church here in the ministry. We can please you in it. And Lord, do it together. Lord, we see too many of the false religions doing it great. We see the, the, the false gods, when the people that follow the false gods doing it great. Lord, I pray that we as Christians that hold the truth and know you personally through the Lord Jesus Christ can do what we need to do as a body, as a church here at Charity Baptist Church. Lord, help us now. In Jesus' name, amen. Number one, I want you to know what the great thing is here at Charity Baptist Church that everyone has a different personality, amen? Some are outgoing. Some you can't even say hello, you know? Some are timid. Some are bold. Some are courageous. Some are... Uh, how can I say, stubborn, some are proud, some have issues, and some, it goes, there's all kinds of stuff. <laughs> we all have different personalities, you know why? Because that's how God made you. I, you guys all have uh, different talents and abilities, praise the Lord for that, because I don't want you to be the same as the other. And that's very good. The key to the whole thing is that we get to learn how to do it. Hey, the apostles had different personalities too. How many remember Peter? Peter was hard-headed. He was, he, he was, he had no, he, at the beginning he denied Christ for time, so he didn't really have boldness or courage. He, you know, he had, t- Downing Thomas, he was shaky in his faith, but, but yet he still followed the Lord. We go on, we sit there, we, and we go on a little bit further, we get to see others like, like John that had, that was very tender-hearted and loved the Lord. See, each one had a different personality, but yet they gave their heart over the Lord to be, to serve him, and the Lord utilize each of their personalities 
to glorify Him. Each one had different gifts. Each one was gave their whatever they knew, whatever God given gift they had, or talents and, and, and abilities that they had in the ministry, they gave on to the Lord. And guess what? God utilized that for His glory to get the gospel out. Uh, we saw also that it, it, even though they had shortcomings, right? Every one of them had shortcomings. Everyone's not perfect. You know, how many realize that we as Christians are still not perfect? We will one day when we go to heaven. But right now, those shortcomings, those weaknesses, those things that we still got to get victory over, those things that we got to mature on, uh, mature in, God is utilizing. Look at now, your walk with God here down on earth. Your you you as a member of Charity Baptist Church, you as you serve God, get to mold you to be what God needs you to be for Him. So in the future, but you can't figure out. In the future, that you can't understand. In the future, that you won't know. Only God does. Providentially, He will mold you to be the Christian you need to be in His sight. And it's going to take, guess what? It's going to take disappointment. It's going to take frustration. It's going to take some discouragement. It's going to take some victory. It's going to take some blessing that we can give joy and, and praise God and, and a mountaintop experience. It's going to take it's going to take some times in the valley. It's going to take, take on some battle battles, some, some warfare we talk about on Thursday. You might have to sit there and battle some things. Some things. Your flesh might get tested. Your mind might be challenged. You might even get to a point where you start doubting God. But you know what? God will come along and give you the answer to that doubt, and all of a sudden your faith will increase. You need to give yourself to God and let God mold you to what you need to be. Uh, be able to, look at now, serve battle, elbow to elbow. Serve God together to make a difference. Look, at, you're, you're not, you cannot take the world on your own. Amen? We need to work together. Hey, did it in the Bible? What did Jesus say? How many did it take to turn the world upside down? Who can tell me? How many did it take to turn the world upside down according to scriptures? How many? Twelve. It took twelve apostles to turn the world upside down. When they found, when they let loose, and that gospel, the whole world turned upside down. Isn't it amazing how the, uh, uh, a minority of voice can cause so much ruckus. Look, look, in, look in politics right now. There's certain groups that are just, just, I mean, they're dragging it, they're steering the whole boat. And all. Oh, think about that. It's pretty scary, ain't it? Overcoming certain things of safety and peace for the sake of a minority group. They want to make sure they get their way but they're not willing to work with others. Think about that. So the government has to appease them and give them the right away because they have freedoms too, but they're not willing to integrate together and unify. Think about that. We as Christians should not be that way. Praise the Lord, that our Constitution, this world, that our country today, was to allow to have the freedoms to choose. Amen? We can't even have freedom of speech anymore. I, I posted a video. Do you know how many saw that video I put on my Facebook? Watch that. In the United Kingdom, they can't even quote Winston Churchill. That's not even Bible. Winston Churchill warned his country about Islam in, in the 40s and 50s. 40s and 50s. And today they're doing that. So a man, a politician, got up there, a professor too, got out there and quoted out of Winston Churchill's book. And guess what happened to him? He got arrested. Now we're not even talking Bible here. We're not talking a Bible religious group. We're talking a man that quoted one of the greatest leaders that people looked up to in history, traditional history, got arrested for quoting out of a book that, he, that Winston Churchill wrote about the warnings of Islam. Just think about that. They're going to do that here too, you know. That's why I want you to get ready. You know what? Fooey on them. I'm still going to go ahead and do it. I don't want to tell you. And now, people, I, I, I really encourage seeing that guy from um, he walked right into the mosque. Do you see that? I go, man, he walked right into the mosque and gave out a Bible and, and a gospel track and told the, the priest and the, and, the, and the members of a mosque about Jesus. I'm like, wow! And then he's walking out the door and he's looking over his shoulder to see if the cops are coming. And he keeps booking out, keeps going. That's pretty cool, man. I tip my hat to that guy. Hallelujah. That's some boldness. Amen? And so what I want to share with you today, that we're going to get to a day that our unique diversity, you're going to get some people that are so bold, we're going to think they're crazy. That's okay. Crazy might be good. <laughs> Amen? 
Then we got some that are like Nicodemus and are very timid, and they might go about giving the gospel out in a different way. Maybe just leave a track and walk away. Hey, guess what? What happened? Both they both got the gospel out. Amen. That's all that matters. So I'm just trying to tell you, God uses. I mean, so much. Uh, I want to share with you some things here. We have been given some great gifts. Um, for the sake of time, I'm just going to share something. I might share one or two, but listen. Well, look at what was the greatest gift that God gave us? Which is who? Jesus. The greatest gift was Jesus, right? Uh, Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. That was the great gift. We have Jesus. So once we have Jesus, do we need anything else? No. Do we have all we have? He's our all. Let's think about this. One of the greatest gifts. So each one of us has that gift. Uh, John uh, chapter 15, verse 26 talks about the gift of the Holy Spirit. We have the Holy Spirit dwelling where now when we get saved? Right in our heart. Amen. I see people going like this. Right in our heart that can lead us to, into all truth. Lead us in the right manner. Not being manipulated. Not being beat down to convert. Not being uh, uh, manipulated in all kinds of different ways. But by the Holy Spirit, which I think he does two things. He's sweet. Amen. Sweet peace that he gives. But he also but not with a knife to cut us all up and beat us all with a whatever with a, a foot stomp. Okay? You better convert. No. The Holy Spirit does it like a gentleman. Does it proper and just. Uh, James chapter 4, verse 6. God gave us the gift of grace. Amen? Grace. You're here this morning. You're going through some things in life. Guess what? God gave you a gift that you can exercise in your life. Grace. Let's look at that one. James chapter 4 real quick, if you could. I, I got to at least give you some scripture in here. James chapter 4, if you could. James chapter 4. And I want you to show you here what Jesus told James. James, Sean, wait, you're going through life? You know what? We're going to get some grace. See, grace is when you try and you feel like you failed, but then God gives you a little bit more grace to carry on and to do what you need to do as a Christian. Hey, Go as far as you can, according to truth, according to wisdom, according to leading the Holy Spirit, and sometimes you need to might have to ask God for grace. Okay? What do you mean grace for what? To show the love to to maybe your to your your spouse, maybe at the workplace. Uh, there's some people that you know what? I love some. I, listen, this whole thing. People are coming to me asking me questions about Islam now. I haven't said a word about nothing. So how do I I, get, I go from Islam to Jesus in a heartbeat? Hey, you're asking me. I'm going to give you answers. You, yeah, hey, I didn't. I didn't out there preaching it. They're coming to me, gave me questions. I said, "Well, this is how it's going to be." I says, "You better realize and find the truth." You know. And now people that say they don't believe in God are talking about God all of a sudden. I'm like, I thought you're an atheist. Well, I don't think God's that way. What do you think God is then? Or trying to let go. Well, you know, God sent His Son. He was a perfect message of love. For God so loved the world. That was His perfect message in Jesus. And they look at me, and they go, this is an atheist now going, acknowledge, goes, yeah. Wait, I thought you were an atheist. No, they, see, they became an atheist because they want to live the way they want to, but they grew up in church, like a Methodist church or a Presbyterian church, where mom and dad took them there and grandma took them. So there's a little bit of truth in them that they got when they were a child. Now that they're an adult, they start seeing things get a little bit scary out there. And now, praise the Lord, look at now. Now, those things that came back from a child are coming up, and that atheist sit there and when they start thinking about God, that God is a part of God that does love. Huh. Okay. Let's camp on that a little bit. Let's camp on So I'm playing the little seed. We went from Islam to Jesus in a matter of, I don't know, a few seconds, which is fine with me. Amen? Fine with me. Uh, here in James chapter 4, verse 6 says this, But he giveth more grace, wherefore he saith, God resisteth the proud, but giveth grace unto the humble. So let me say this. In your life, as you deal in your household, in your marriage, in the work, here at the church and in ministry, out there with the lost people, you know what you need to ask God to give you? More grace. Okay? Because if you get all proud and sassy and you're nasty, guess what God's going to do? He's going to step away from you. He can't work in your life being proud and nasty. He wants to give you grace so you can learn how to, how to, how to work with others, how to shine your light. Hey, there's some people that run I mean, there's some people that are just, they just like, like, some of them kind of like, you know, want to na provoke you and nag you to get you going. i got to sit there and walk away and say, I'll pray for you. Jesus loves you. 
And I say it sincerely because I know they got to push the buttons. Oh, yeah. They really do. But now they're getting a little more respectful. You know why? They see that I, have, I make a stand, but yet I don't do it in an arrogant way. I do it in a way that brings forth to show Christ peaceably and lovingly, graciously. And they try all kinds of ways to push the buttons. But I sit there and I walk around and go, well, that's your opinion. I'll pray for you, but just look, make sure you always search out truth in the facts. Always good. You know, I always do that because, you know what, truth is on our side, amen? When we talk about it, okay, let's go down a little bit further. Ready for a little bit further? Uh, turn over to James chapter 1, which is a good one. Ready? James chapter 1, and in verse 5 says this. James chapter 1, verse 5. Not only do we got the gift of, of, of Jesus himself, the Son of God, and, and the Holy Spirit and grace, but we also get something that we always need. Remember, who is ultimately smarter than anybody? God is. Don't think you're smarter than God because we're not. I'm not, you're not, no one else. James chapter 1, verse 5 says this. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that giveth all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and they shall be given to him. You want to go ahead and search out a matter? You want to know how to handle something in life? You want to know how to be led and how to direct? Go right to that Bible and get that wisdom. Amen? I, when people ask for wisdom, I'll give them a life experience, but then I'll go in the Bible and I'll show them what the Bible says of the truth so you can sit there and pray about to make the move. And by the way, Holy Spirit and the Bible do not contradict. Okay? So you need to be informed as much as you can with the truth of the Bible. And I'll share a little bit of my around me that want to share how they can get the crossroad right here and what to see God's face and get true wisdom to go ahead and do the right thing. All right? I don't know about you, we're going to come down in age. I want to do right before God. Amen? I'm going to go, I'm going to do right. I'm not going to sit there and bow down. We have plenty of people come to this church and in the ministry that have offered a lot of money in their way. I told them, eh, I'll say, blessed. I said, eh, oh yeah, there's a lot of people came to me. Well, I'll just leave the church. It's fine. And I'll, you could take your $500 every two weeks and I don't have to tell you, I love you, but I can't do what you're taking. It goes against God. You're running the show here. I'm not even running the show here. The God put office, and I'm going to go that way. That's pretty scary. Pastors go through that. I'm going to tell you that right now. It happened here, and I said, adios, amigos. Amen. Yeah, it's scary, but it's ha it happened. It happens in the church, right? It happens in politics. Don't bring politics in the church. <laughs> Take it somewhere else, you know? Those special interest groups. We had a few of those. Even It happens in Christianity, too, you know. So let you know, be very careful, okay? Now, John, look at look another gift we get. Turn to, um, turn to uh, Philippians chapter 1. We'll get to my second part. We're, we're going along really good here. Philippians, Philippians chapter 1. Not only do we get the gift of Jesus, the Son of God, the Holy Spirit, grace, wisdom, but here in Philippians chapter 1, I want you to look at verse 29. For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on him, but to also suffer for his sake. Look at that. Not only to believe on him, okay, we get faith. We get the opportunity to believe on Jesus. Look, it took faith in order to get us saved, amen? For by grace we are saved through faith, not of ourselves. But now we get to live according to believing on him. You want your Christianity to work? You want your Christianity to, be, be, to blossom? You gotta continue put your you gotta continue in who? The Lord Jesus Christ. You have to. We don't get saved and we take over the steering wheel and run with it. We get saved and also we put our life and our whole entire life because we put look at God saved your soul, but what about your life? Now our life needs to be hidden in him. You need to put your life in his hands. I don't know about you, but I'm pretty sure he's he, who wrote the manual for life. Jesus did. He made us. He made us when he breathed a living soul into us in the book of Genesis. When he saved our, when he saved our soul, we became born again. We got a new life in Christ. And I'm going to tell you this right now. Our, it's, we're in better hands when he took control of it than we do. Amen? I, I, listen, I'm telling you right now. This is where the battle comes when you talk about when God starts making us and molding us and utilizing us in so many ways. So now we get the gift of, of, of the Son of God and the Holy Spirit and of grace, and of wisdom, and faith. 
about. Ephesians chapter 4. Ready? Ephesians chapter 4. <clears throat> I want you to look at two verses. So not only does the Lord give us a gift of all this, but He gives us a blessing and a gift of placement. Look up here. Of placement. What do you mean by that, Pastor Pete? Do you know that because God gives you a certain ability and, and a certain talent and a willing heart that you, that you love doing what you do it for the Lord? So God puts you in placement of where you're going to reach your fullest potential to serve God. Think about this. And only God's going to place you there. And some people can't do what you do. Amen? For the Lord. You can't do like what God has done for you. you. God has given you a special ability that you get to do and glorify God in. In Ephesians chapter 4, look at verse 11 and 12. This is what Jesus did. Jesus, and he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers. For what? Verse 12. The perfecting of the saint. For the work of the ministry. For the edifying of the body of what? So not, not everybody can be an evangelist. Not everybody can be a pastor. Not everybody can be a teacher. But as long as you're willing, as long as you're going to allow God to do what God needs to do to you, and, and avail yourself to grow in grace and get all the wisdom you can and be taught, God will put you and train you for that stuff. You know, I thought for sure that I was going to be an evangelist. God said no. I thought for sure. I, I thought for sure that I was going to be the pastor of Faith Bible Baptist Church of Medina, New York. My wife prayed about it. We were on a deputation trying to raise money. And they come back and have me fill the pulpit because they're looking for a pastor. Man, those people loved me. I thought, maybe God wants me to be a pastor of this church. Maybe I'll just hand back the mission work, the street work over to somebody else. Maybe God wants me to go in there. And we prayed and fast for two weeks. We thought for sure God wanted it. And I called up the guy, the, the, two, the two deacons of the church, the elder, and goes, hey, did you find a pastor yet? He says, yeah, we did. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay. I said, because they asked me to be the pastor. And I said, well, okay. Well, so I was praying about it, and God, God kind of gave me a little bit of peace, maybe to, to be your pastor. We're willing to move out there and continue what's going on there. He goes, no. Nah. He goes, preacher, we, we already voted one in already, just last week. So I felt that I was it. God didn't. If God wanted me there, what would he have done? He would have put me there. But God had different plans. I said, well, God, what do you want me to do? So I want you to continue what you're doing. I'm preparing you for something greater. That's what it was here. We prayed for, we prayed for this church for almost eight years. We did. Eight years. Everybody was on board for it. Until I got it. <laughs> I can't figure that one out. We were praying for eight years when we got it, but now, no, 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 no. hello, I had to retract. Remember that day when we prayed, when I was mess men all together, came down here praying in front of the building? We used to run the inner city Baba Club, teenagers. We had almost 30 teenagers here from the city. Okay? We rented this place out for 150 bucks a month. That was back, I want to say probably 18, maybe 18, no, a little longer than that. Take that back. It's almost 25 years, almost 23, 24 years ago. We had this, right here, we, we used all the parts. We rented this place out for 150 bucks. They have the teenagers in the area. All the church kids, all the teenagers that come from good Christian homes are getting jealous. Well, why can't we come down? Well, you could if we could get a bus down here. And lo and behold, they brought all the teenagers from the church kids to join up with the city kids. We had in this auditorium close to 68, we had an all-time high of 68 teenagers here. For Baba Club. All because I had a heart to reach the inner city teenagers. And I asked some people to help. And it was growing pretty good. Okay? Oh yeah. And when I went, and God moved me on. You know what God moved me on to? Street work. The homeless. Inner city ministry. Keep it on. And I handed over to somebody else. Guess how long, guess how long the Baba Club lasted? Not even a year. And it dropped out. Lost all of them. And I went after all my teenagers. I led to the Lord and everything else. Oh, yeah. I led them to the Lord, brought them to the church, and then Brother Dan Berducci taught them. <laughs> it was like a one-two punch. a crazy one-two punch, ain't it? 
We get them in here glad, Dingus, all yours. There's all your teenagers. Wham! You know? So that's how that's how it was. But you know what? Sometimes when God, look at, what did I have? I had nothing special. I had a willing heart. And listen, God always uses a willing heart. God will do great things. God will take unique diversities, great unique skills, and blend them all together for the cause of Christ, and God will bless and see great things happen. All right? We, we had a couple that just got married, and I'm telling you, one was 19, the other one was 20. They just came out of their teenage years. And now they're trying to teach, now they're, they're helpers of me trying to teach those teenagers. Think about that. Let me ask you a question. What unique talent, skill, ability that God gave you that you're willing to give unto God and His church and His ministry. Please, pray about it and give it. Number two, once you start getting things in, in, in focus and, and you start moving forward here, I want you to notice, go back to, uh, if you could, 1 Corinthians chapter 12 where we our text is. And I want you to notice something here. Not only did the Lord say, now concerning spiritual gifts, He's trying to lay it all out here in the church. There's a concern here I want you to not be ignorant of that everybody in the church has a diverse uniqueness that I'm going to utilize for his cause. To teach and, and to build, my, uh, to build uh, the body of Christ, uh, my people. And I want you to notice here in verse 3, it says this, Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaketh by the Spirit of God called Jesus a curse, and that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord but by the Holy Ghost. So he wants to sit there and make sure that it's spirit-filled, it's, it's what the Holy Spirit confirms, it's according to true understanding of the knowledge of God. So I want to help you here this morning. I want, when you start getting into ministry, you start understanding what the ministry truly is all about. Who can tell me what the ministry is all about when it comes to the body of Christ and the church of God? Who can tell me? Anybody here? What is the ministry truly all about? Brother Mike? Salvation of what? Preaching, preaching salvation, teaching salvation what? Mm -hmm. That should be the forefront of everything, right? You're, yep, sharing the gospel. So it's not about you following me or the person following whatever, right? Secondly, when you start getting into ministry, what are some of the, thing, the, the practical things you start finding out about the ministry? Who can tell me? What's that? The way how you live a life is, the, is, is very crucial. Why is that? You're representing Christ now, not just yourself. Because you could take the blows. Remember Peter denied Christ three times? He was representing Christ. We go, hey, where did you with that Jesus guy? Not me! You know, and I'll say, <coughs> right? And I'll say, oh, watch out, you know? So think about that. Um, <laughs> practical things about the ministry, right? Things that happen here in the church, Brother Harry, you know, sits there and scratches his head like, oh, I can't understand that. There's some crazy things happen in ministry here, hasn't it, over the years? And I, some of you might still have question marks about it. Like, why did it happen? How did it happen? How can you allow that to happen? Hey, when you're dealing with people, what do they have? People have what? They have, sinful, they have a sinful nature still. But you also, when they say they also have the Holy Spirit, so you've got to let the Holy Spirit work on them. Sometimes you even got to go ahead and, and allow grace to happen and mercy to happen in order for them to see that they need to grow, grow with God. They get to make some changes in their life to live holy and godly and honestly before God. So that takes some, that takes some serious uh, compassion. That takes some serious forgiveness. That takes some uh, 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 letting, letting them go ahead and stand back and see it, uh, to build up a trust with, right? You be careful about that, but sometimes you got to do what you got to do in order for them to give opportunity. You know, you might, what they're talking about, you got to see if it's in action, what, how they're truly living and willing to do for the Lord. We have a lot of people that come here to tell, I, I can do this for you. I can do that for you. I can do this for you. But outside, the, outside these doors, they were not too spiritual. They got given a gift, right? There's a lot of people got a lot of gifts. But behind the scenes... There's some, some, some people they've got behind the pulpit that preach some good meals, uh, some good spiritual meals behind here, but you didn't know back, at, back here you go, right? Look up here now. You didn't know that behind their darkest closets, they're, they're truly a pedophile. Oh, yeah. Pedophiles. Behind the pulpit, big churches. When you take a girl that is 17 years old to another state where it's legal, and you're the pastor of that girl... You're a pedophile. I don't care what the state says. You're still a pedophile. 
Come on. Think about it. So, you, so you know, you people sit there all the time. I can't understand that. I can't understand it. Yeah. I don't care what denomination you are. I don't care if you're wearing a collar. I don't care if you're wearing a shirt and tie and you're a pastor of 5,000. Guess what, buddy? So sinful nature. That person has to build a trust. He has to be proven. And once you start getting proud, God gets off the proud, boy. I'm telling you right now. But if you're humble and you're meek and you're thankful for what God's doing in your life and in your church and your people's people's lives, you're you're on you're on the right course. Amen. Be very careful. Sometimes can I tell you, bigger is not always better. I remember I told my wife, when we buy a house, we're not getting a big house. Why? Remember in the 80s, everybody's buying big houses until the gas prices went up. <laughs> and now they want to go ahead and they want to, oh, we got to downsize. No one wants to buy your house. They all had to take loss. Going bigger is not always better. Being more efficient and effective is better because then it exalts God. It lifts him up. It pleases him. Uh, God can do whatever he wants to do. In order to get an understanding, people scratch their head. How can God use a man like this, but not a person like me? How can, a, how can God use that person, but, but not use me? Well, why am I, you know, be very careful. Hey, God did some great things with people that were not qualified. Like Sarah was old, but yet she was pregnant, right? An old lady got pregnant. They're like, what? She can't have a baby? Oh, yeah, she can. She did. God did. How about another one? Want to give you another one? How about Moses? What was Moses' problem? Who could tell me? He stuttered. One of the greatest leaders in the Bible. He was one of the greatest leaders in the Bible, even though he, couldn't, he didn't speak well. How about another one? Ready? In Hebrews 11, 31, there was a lady named Rahab that God used. Who, what was Rahab? Who could tell me who Rahab was? Rahab was a prostitute. How do you like that one? A prostitute. So let me ask you a question. So let's say a, a prostitute gets saved, and you've got to learn the ways that Christ comes in here, and all of a sudden brings like 20 new people to church. I'm not going to ask any questions. As, I, as she grows in grace, she learns that she needs to live holy now, live a right life. She brings in 20 people, hallelujah. Now I'll preach the gospel to the 20 people she invites. You just never know. You just never know. But God used the harlot. Oh my goodness. The Lord used a harlot? Yeah. And I guarantee all those real, those real snobby church people in church are sitting there going, oh, she can't be in church. We need to stone her. I thought church was a hospital, a rescue, right? A rescue place, right? Who hey, as long as she gets saved and she wants to learn Jesus, you got to give a little patience. you got to give time for that. Harlot Rahab to, to learn Jesus and start changing her lifestyle. Yeah, I'm not saying go around, she can't come in here and look for clients. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But, but she can come in here, right? Come in here to learn Jesus. Learn that her first love needs not to be herself, but Jesus. It takes time. I'll never forget when we, when we finally let go of the, the Bible Club and we went into the ministry of charity mission, we led a lady to the Lord. My wife and I named Beverly. She was a prostitute on, on Genesee Street. We took her to a camp meeting to share her testimony. And she shared in her testimony publicly how she saved her so happy because my, my days are numbered because I have AIDS. And she, look at, she came there that day and we proclaimed it over the pulpit and down there and only, I don't know, maybe five people gave her a hug and welcomed her into the family of God. All because she says she had AIDS. What do you think about that? She says she's saved and born again, and only five people, my wife and I and three other people, gave her a hug and said, welcome to the family of God. We just led her to the Lord that, that Tuesday down on the street, me and my wife. And then when she was dying in her deathbed, we went to visit her, prayed over her. She was happy to go home. She was, I'm going to heaven. Smiles, whole nine hours. She looked at death, I don't care, I'm out of here. Think about that. But the church folks, talk about lack of understanding. And when I told all those church people, I said, you know what? You're going to McDonald's probably this week, and you're probably gonna get a, a big, you're probably gonna get a Big Mac, you know what? And I guarantee you, maybe one of those employees might have the same thing. And they're and they're touching your food. How do you like that? 
but you'll still eat a Big Mac. Oh, they didn't like that. Hey, be careful. Pride, self-righteousness, parasitical. Listen, lack of understanding. But they're so spiritual. Ah, just because you might know a whole lot doesn't mean you're spiritual. Be very careful. Be very careful. Here, here's another one that God used. You want to hear this one? A little, a little child that really doesn't really know nothing. He's, he don't know nothing. But because of that child's innocence and tender heartedness, went ahead and handed over some fishes and loaves, and praise the Lord, God used that little child in his lunch and took care of business. Amen? Just think about that. God can use a willing... How about this one? Ready? Balaam's donkey. God can even use an ass. <laughs> How do you like that? Hallelujah! Is that not great? I mean, if God can use all those folks in the ministry, God can use... Listen, understand, understand, understand. God wants us to go ahead and get understanding that no one needs to have a, a degree in theology, but a willing heart in the ministry. Yeah, whatever you have, whatever you lack, whatever you might like, God can still use you in the ministry for His glory, to edify the body. You look at God needs you in the ministry. God needs you in the church. We have to learn how to work together, which is my third point. Amen? Each one of us is diverse. He's not just unique in the eyes of God, and the Lord wants to use Turn to Ephesians chapter 4 real quick. Uh, we just were there, but let's go ahead and read uh, as we get to our last point here. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4, starting at verse 1, says this, Therefore the prisoner of the Lord beseech you that you walk worthy of the vocation where you are called, with all lowliness and meekness and long-suffering, forbearing one another in love. Verse 3, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. I want you to notice right here, God says you need, to, you need to exercise these things when you're in the ministry, when you're in the church. Here, here Paul's talking to this church in Ephesus saying, listen, you need to sit there and be, you need to be lowly. I mean, you can't be proud. You can't exalt yourself that you're better than somebody. Uh, meek, that means you've got to be soft-spoken and realize you need, ten, you need a little mercy, a little tenderness. You know what else? You need to be long-suffering. Because no one's like you doesn't mean that everybody wants to be like you. You might have to sit there and let them be what God wants them to be and pray for them as they pray for you. Here's another one, ready? You might have to go along and says, and forbearing one another. It means you got to put up with me. And i got to put up with what? You. Amen? So you got to do that. And, and you got to do it, look at now, not just put up, but, but in love you got to do it. Not in hate, not in envy, not in strife, not in anger, not in rah, but love. Yep, but love. I don't want you to love me. Get away from me. <laughs> no, you got to. And look at verse 3. Endeavoring to keep the unity. What well, means, guess what? There's times where you're going to not feel like you're unified. Well, you might have to, you might have to, I don't know if no one ever says anything to me. Well, why don't you be the first one to say something? Hey, good morning. Praise the Lord. Good to see you. No one ever shakes my hand. Well, why don't you be the one to shake the hand? So you might have to endeavor in Denver, in endeavor to go out there and do what you got to do. God has seen some great things. We're, all through the Bible, you'll sit there and say, love one another, right? How many scriptures in the Bible about loving one another? There's a whole bunch, is there not? Pray for one another. All through the Bible, examples of praying for one another. Exhort one another. Encourage. We said about edifying, build each other up, esteeming one another. That means, look at you might be better than somebody. Guess what? In a whole lot of things, doesn't mean you step all over them, make them feel like they're worthless. No. You go over that person, you try to lift them up, esteem them, pick them up, and put them at your level, and maybe even lift them up even higher than you. What do you think of that, huh? That's what Christianity is all about. And then it also talks about serve one another. Why well, do I don't want to serve that person? That person drives me crazy. Good, then serve them. They'll do you good. Then why do you think it? It's going to teach you greater love for that person. It's going to teach you how to pray for them even better. It's going to teach you how to encourage something that's so hard to someone to encourage. Lastly, this. Turn to Psalm chapter 133, and I'll close. Psalm 133. Here in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, God has laid out His church that we need to realize that everyone is not the same, but yet everyone is needed. Everyone has diversities and abilities, but everyone's needed in the cause of Christ. 
we got to understand that we have to understand as we go ahead and do what we need to do, to do what we need to do for the Lord with the, for the gospel's sake, to glorify Him. We need to have great understanding that God can use anybody. Please let them in. Amen? Please let them I mean, If you have a talent ability, you want to do something for God, you are welcome. The door's open. I'll roll out the red carpet. We'll teach you. We'll train you. Don't be feel like you're shunned or exempt. We want you involved. Amen? Uh, Psalm 133, verse 1 says this, Behold, how good... And how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in what? In unity. The Lord is very is pleased tremendously that we can go ahead and do things together for Him. If an area is crowded, there's too many. Like you can only have so many people at the stove cooking, right, Janice? Someone's going to get burned. But you know what? We'll find you a place in the kitchen. We'll find you a place in the whole process of that ministry. Hey, if someone wants to go ahead and do this or do that, we'll get it set up. We'll implement you. It's going to take time. We'll find ways. There's a lot of voids in this ministry, this church right here. We invite you. But look at your ability, your willingness, we'll find a way to utilize. But guess what? It's not yours, and it's not mine. It's his. It has to be done in order. So there's no chaos. If there's confusion going on, guess what? The devil's going to take advantage of that. He's going to say, ha ha, good confusion. Yay. And he's going to get in there and he's going to ruin you. Jesus wants it in order. He wants it to be pleasant. He wants it to glorify. Amen? Why? Because we're here to give the gospel. Every ministry needs the gospel to get out to glorify him. Hey, look up here. Now concerning you, what do you have to give God? What are you willing to give God? Are you willing to grow and understand and are you willing to do it in unity to please Him, to glorify Him in God's body, God's church, God's ministry for His gospel's sake? We're going to pray. We're going to sing.